have a little bit of a different little fun fold opening there for you. So let me show you what we're using today. Okay, let me get my camera switched here. All right. So I'm using one of the Mega Suites, Unbounded Beauty, and it actually has two stamp sets. So we have a, a floral, floral two-step. So you do one and then the other, right? Remember what two-step is? If not, here's your chance to learn. And it comes with a matching die set that also has some extra little elements in it. And then it also is partnered with a greeting set. Since this has no greetings in it, this is a perfect match, right? And look at these labels. Aren't they just stunning? There's just like some really fun shapes here, right? All right, so let me put these aside and let me show you how I made this card, right? Because you all want to know how do you have a double opening card? Like what's going on with that, right? All right, so first off, I have a sheet of paper that is not a half of anything. It's actually a little bit, um, a little bit different in size. I, oh, I got the measurements over on my blog. The link is below, so you can go check out what the actual size is. But this is Petunia Pop cardstock, and I am going to score it at five and a half. Okay. So it's at five and a half. So let's see. The card is actually eight and a quarter by four and a quarter. I guess I have a ruler right here, right? And this we're going to score. So this is how our one little opening on one side is going to be, right? And on that, we're going to add some of the Unbounded Beauty designer paper. Don't you just love this paper? This, this, this whole suite features like the new 2024, 2026 in colors, like beautifully has all kinds of matching stuff, different kinds of designer papers, specialty papers, glimmer, pa not glimmer, shimmer papers. So it's like glitter paper without the glitter, right? Because that's always, you know, when you're using glitter, it's just like everywhere. So I'm going to put some of this Petunia Pop pattern on the inside of my card. And then on the outside... I'm going to add some of this. My chair keeps sinking. <laughs> I feel like I'm a short person. So we're going to do, I think I like this way better. So we've got some of the pretty pattern there with these flowers. Can you tell what we might be going to be using on this with these little, these little roses? I don't think they're actually roses, but they look like a rose to me, and I don't know all my flowers very well. All right, so... Here's a little bit of the trick part of it, is this is a piece of basic white, and that is eight and a half by two and three quarters. Yep, eight and a half by two and three quarters. So this I'm gonna score at four and a quarter, okay? Right like that, that out of the way. And let's get this folded in half, all right? So on this, I'm going to put tape on one side, all right? Now, I want this to be centered on my card, right? We all want it to be centered. So let's, let's hold the card and let's get the center. That's probably about there because it's based on the crease, okay? You can also do it this way, where you fold it over and kind of hover it on there and make sure that you're not liking, you know, it's not in the wrong spot. So you could do it that way. A third way is to actually open this up into this side. Keep this folded in half. And literally, this is the easiest. You just center it on the card. Like, we didn't have to make this difficult, did we? Look at that. Now when you open it and fold it back, it is still centered on the card. So that's the easy way to do it. We've had people try all different ways. Now I'm gonna add some more Petunia Pop. This I have pre-embossed. You guys don't need to watch me do everything. This is embossed with the um, Bricks embossing folder. Another really good one to have on hand because it's a very basic background, goes with lots of stuff. So this one's going to be kind of a little bit of an outdoorsy card with a brick wall going on there. Okay. Now for some stamping, I'm going to get my two-step stamps of the roses, and I'm going to use my petal pink. 
I'm going to show you something here really quick too. So I'm going to stamp it twice just so that you see the difference between the two things here that I'm going to show you. Let me get some scrap paper here going over here too. All right, so that's the outline in Pretty in Pink. Now I'm going to use the inside, the filler, also in Pretty in Pink, and that just gets lined up like so. Usually you can find which one is the easy, oh, there it is, this little point here. Okay, so if I'm doing this and I line it up, it's kind of like the same color. If you stamp off once and line it up, you're going to get a lighter color. Now, to avoid doing this, having this happen, what you would need to do is let that first ink dry. So if I had let this dry a little bit, then the, the inks would not have bled together so much. But another shortcut way is to just stamp it off. And then, oh, I forgot my centerpiece. We need this little, we need this little center guy here. We need him. Do I have a block out here? Eh, we'll use this one. Not the right size block for that, but that's okay. All right, so this is the little stamens in the middle. And we're just going to kind of put them right over the top, right in the middle. Voila! I just wanted a little bit more color so that we could di differentiate our center on our card. Now this we do have to die cut out. So let me get those let me get those die cuts and it is the little rose here. Okay? And let me get my little boss my stamp and cut mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Need a base plate a clear plate, my image, line up my die, and right here, this way. Right, there's, always a, there's always a direction for these, right? Now you could use a little piece of washi tape or double stick, to, or you know, just a, a little masking tape if you have it to hold that down if you want. I'm usually pretty good at letting it sit there and just dropping the plate on top of it and then we will slide that through and get it cut. All right, set that aside. And we have one pretty little flower. All right, now I've already pre-die cut out for us some of the other little elements. So I used this die here and then a the couple of these little leaves, okay? So what I did is I cut this die out twice, once in Summer Splash and another time in Basic White, but I wanted the centerpiece, okay? So that's how we're going to do this. Now I'm going to get my Petunia Pop ink back out. Now I did this card. It was a sympathy card, but I'm going to try another stamp. This one says, May All Your Wishes Come, through, come True. So all your wishes come true. So just so you know that there's multiple images that work on these pieces. So it's not just one stamp set, one stamp. You can use different greetings out of that set to work within this same die cut area. So I'm going to flip that over and flip this piece over. And I'm going to line that cutaway. So originally this cut this out, right? The stamp originally, you know, was two pieces because it, it cut out this little negative. So it's going to nest right in because it's from the same die, right? And then I'm going to get some dimensionals. And we're going to put one down here. And I'm just going to kind of hook the edge, the edge of the dimensional with that outline. So this is, this is a way to be able to utilize these cutaways, but still be able to use them as a full label. Now I could have done where part of it was popped up and part of it wasn't. That's another alternative, but I just wanted to use some of these little pieces in conjunction with each other. And I just get another one over here in the corner and one over here to hold that edge down. 
Okay. And that's holding the, the negative that you normally wouldn't use with the outline piece that it die cuts out. Okay. And it fits perfectly because it's cut from the same die, right? And this I'm going to add onto my card front here, right in the middle, just like that. I'm going to get my bone folder here and get this a little more scored so it lays flat for the camera a little better. All right, now I've also pre-die cut out uh, some other additional leaves out of the shimmer paper. So it looks like glitter paper, but nothing falls off so that, you know, if you're allergic to glitter because it goes everywhere, you get the look, but you don't get the mess. All right, so for this, I'm going to add... Let me get a little bit of um, liquid glue here. I want uh, the little one. Actually, I'm going to add this. I'm going to add this second. I'm going to add my flower first so I know where I'm putting it. And let me get a couple of full-size dimensionals. Maybe. I lost them. Huh. It's amazing how things just go missing in your craft room, right? Oh, are they? Oh, there they are. Found them. All right, so I need a dimensional here. Give my paper little pinches on the edge here to give my flower not so flat of a look. All right, and I want to put it oh, kind of like right here. Yeah, that's good. Right about there. All right, now for this piece, I'm going to add a little bit of glue to it a little bit of glue to it because my glues keep oozing out here and we're going to tuck it in behind the flower right like that okay and i'll do another little liquid glue on this one why am i i there must be a you know what it's supposed to rain this only happens when there's like a low pressure system coming into town and my glue gets all wonky. And I'll put some of this maybe right here. You know, it's like when you're on the airplane. Like I've, I've, I've traveled and had that glue in my suitcase. And then when I open it up, it's like a fountain of youth because of the pressure from the cabin, pressure in the airplane, right? Oh, I got glue on everything. And uh, just so happens that, that there is a low pressure coming. It's supposed to rain tonight here. So I have glue everywhere. All right, so now for, you know, the, the, the ribbon. You know me, I just use ribbon all the time. I love, love, love the way that it makes the card look even just, you know, more personalized. You know, you spent the, all this time making this. Let's just really dress it up. All right, let's get that ribbon going here. If you need to know how to make a bow, lots of my videos give you the... Uh, the details on bows. So feel free to subscribe to my channel, grab some additional videos, and uh, learn a few more things with me. All right, and some scissors. Now if you, like I said, all of the instructions are over on my blog for this card. Feel free to go over there, stampersclub.com. Link is in the description. You can also find me on Facebook at Stampers Club. You know, it's all Stampers Club. I don't know. Can you see this down here in the middle right here? Yeah, there you go. Right here. Stampers Club. And we're going to add this little bow kind of less, kind of over here under, under here. I guess my glimmer paper is a little bit hiding there too. So we're going to pop that out a little bit. There we go. The one thing about liquid glue is you can still move things. And voila. So this was one that I did as a sympathy card. But swap out the verse and may all your wishes come true. So this would make a great birthday card, right? And then all the greetings all still fit. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I really enjoyed sharing a wonderful little interactive, not interactive, but a little fun fold card for you. And be sure to come back another day. Love you guys. Bye.